A very good afternoon to you. It's nice to be back with you after um, a long while. The, the, the last time this briefing took place uh, was sometime last week, and we couldn't hold that of Monday, but the explanation will come later. But we're back with you now, and we welcome you. This afternoon, we will still maintain the same format, and we'll be taking the remarks from the chairman, after which the technical updates will come in. Thereafter, we shall take the questions from the gentlemen of the press, and responses will come finally. The day is far spent. And I will now go straight to in, invite the chairman of the PTF to the podium to please make his remarks. Mr. Chairman. Members of the Presidential Task Force, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press, let me start by apologizing for this very late start in the uh, press uh, briefing. Uh, I think we had a lot of things to deal with um, this afternoon and uh, having concluded most of the things as we prepare for the last week of the ease of the lockdown, uh, there are so many things that we need to put in place but that will be unfolded uh, next week. However, I welcome you all to the national briefing by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 for Thursday, 23rd July, 2020. For the first time since the Presidential Task Force commenced the regular briefing, we had to postpone the briefing for Monday, 20th July, 2020. On Sunday, 19th July 2020, the dangers that our frontline workers face on a daily basis was forcefully brought to our consciousness when the tweet from the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is a member of the Presidential Task Force, went viral. That singular piece of information in the public space is sufficient proof to Nigerians that the virus is real and does not discriminate. Sequel to that development, the Presidential Task Force and its Secretariat immediately carried out a risk assessment and tested our members to determine their status out of an abundance of caution. Fortunately, as a precautionary measure, the PTF had earlier arranged that all journalists covering their, its activities should be tested equally by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. I am pleased to inform you that testing of members of COVID-19 has been a regular exercise for the PTF and that policy would be sustained. I'm also pleased to inform you that having successfully taken all precautionary measures regarding safety, the normal business of the Presidential Task Force has resumed. We will, however, not lower our guards for any reason because the nation cannot afford to shut down its response. Our prayers and best wishes are with the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, who is doing very well and is stable, as it is with all Nigerians that have contracted the virus and the entire humanity bearing the burden of the pandemic. We wish them all speedy recovery. As we progress, however, the Presidential Task Force might reconsider restructuring the mode of delivering 
some of its activities, relying more on technology to minimize the risk associated with unavoidable physical contacts. Since the last time we briefed the nation, global and national developments continue to yield statistics that point at the fact that the virus is still very potent and spreading fast, that human efforts can speed to stop. WHO statistics show that India has joined the United States of America and Brazil in the category of countries that have recorded over one million cases. Cumulatively, 15,403,120 cases have been recorded from 20, 215 countries and territories. On the African continent, the cumulative total for Africa has risen to 773,804, including 16,448 fatalities. Nigeria, with 38,344 cases, account for about 5% of the Africa's numbers. Similarly, Nigeria, with 813 deaths account for 5% of fatalities in the continent. The message of hope is that the world continues to close its ranks in the search for a vaccine in a manner designed to guarantee rapid, fair, and equitable access worldwide. Back home, there has been a lot of debate on finding a local cure. While this is plausible expectation, the PTF, other relevant institutions of government, and the private sector, working with our partners, shall pursue the path of research relentlessly. As we have often said, only a well-developed partnership will serve humanity. To demonstrate the commitment of government to research on Monday, July 2020, I mean 20th, 2020, I inaugurated the Body of Experts for Health Sector Research and Development Intervention Scheme established by the Central Bank of Nigeria under the chairmanship of the Director General of NAVDAT. The body is expected to address the challenges that limit research and development investment in the healthcare sector. While we do that, it shall be the duty of Nigerians to change their behavior and scale up their compliances with non-pharmaceutical measures. The best option is to totally avoid contracting the virus by staying safe. The aviation sector has been working assiduously to develop the protocols for the resumption of international air services, having done that of the domestic air services. This PTF remains conscious of the significance of the contribution of air travels to economic growth and shall continue to push for a safe resumption. The next phase is for the aviation regulators to engage with other stakeholders to facilitate an integral or integrated and seamless resumption of international flights. I plead with all Nigerians to await authentic information from the aviation authorities and discontinence fake news and speculation on deaths. As we approach the last five days to the end of this eased lockdown phase, the presidential task force shall rigorously evaluate the developments on the basis of emerging data, evolving science, strengthen best practices and improvements in our risk communication strategy. All this would help us form an opinion upon which the next set of recommendations to Mr. President 
will be based. We also have calls to begin to advise Nigerians on the upcoming Ed El Kabir Festival. This naturally comes with lots of mass gatherings, but we must not forget that the guidelines are still in existence and the virus is still very potent. We urge all state governments to ensure that guidelines are adhered to and citizens should not indulge in activities that would allow for the spread of the virus and lives are endangered. We encourage, oh, we, we are encouraged by state governments that have announced ban on solar festivities and hope it will be upheld and replicated by other states. The national coordinator would also amplify on these issues. Today, the presidential task force formally welcomed the new WHO country representative to Nigeria. The WHO has been a major partner in the national response and Nigeria truly appreciates the support of the organization. The presidential task force is happy to note that a number of civil society organizations are fielding medical missions across the country to further deepen awareness amongst the grassroots. While we would always appreciate their efforts, we call on them to work closely and collaboratively with subnational level of governments so that a coordinated risk communication strategy would result in the optimal outreach. The presidential task force wishes to thank friendly nations and corporate organizations for their continuing support through the nation of medicines and equipment. In this regard, we thank India, the nation of India for the donation of seven tons of hydroxychloroquine for treatment of patients. Similarly, we want to express our appreciation to Web Fountain Foundation, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the MTN for the donation of 35 oxygen concentrators, one ambulance, and 500 phones, respectively. We wish to assure you that the resources will be judiciously utilized. The subnational entities have also escalated the levels of their ownership and we will encourage them to continue as that is the most practicable means of dealing with the community transmission phase of the virus. I must always remind all Nigerians to comply with measures put in place. Remember to wear your mask in the proper manner when in public. Do not share face masks because any face mask that is already, already reused becomes a contaminated material and could be dangerous. Finally, dispose of your mask and any other use item properly and safely. This will save others, including strict cleaners, from being exposed to dangers. Finally, the presidential task force finds it necessary to re-educate Nigerians on the policy and strategy for the coordination and management of resources for the national response. For the avoidance of doubt, the presidential task force provides leadership guidance and coordination. The resources generated by the private sector, especially car COVID, is managed and delivered in kind on specific projects. The same goes for the deployment of resources in the United Nations One Basket Fund and the NMPC and partners support. The national coordinator would elaborate more on car COVID and other resources from the international community. I now have the honor and singular privilege to invite the Honorable Minister of Health, the DG, 
NCDC and the national coordinator to present their updates. And I thank you most sincerely for listening. Thank you. The chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 Response, Honorable Ministers, Cabinet Secretaries, uh, National Coordinator, Director General, ladies and gentlemen. The COVID-19 cases recorded daily over the past weeks now fluctuate within the 500 to 700 bracket with 543 new cases in the past 24 hours, bringing our confirmed total number in Nigeria so far to 38,344, of which 15,815 happily were successfully treated and discharged. We have regrettably recorded 813 fatalities, mostly with comorbidities, and also tested a total of 247,825 persons in all. That's nearly a quarter of a million. We have a case fatality ratio of about 2.1%. We can rightly assume from the exponentially increasing numbers that the pool of potentially infectious persons in the community is rising gradually, and with that, the risk of infection for citizens at all levels of society. Since a very significant number of persons testing positive may not show any symptoms and may not be in observation or treatment and they are moving around among us. I must commend persons of influence in society who tested positive for COVID-19 and came out publicly to declare it and entrust themselves to prescribed treatment. They do us a world of good but showing, by showing that there is no shame and no danger and nothing to hide about COVID-19. And they also contribute immensely to building confidence in the health system. The Ministry of Health rededicates itself to doing everything possible to ensure that citizens get the best of treatment and are well taken care of. In this respect, I have received good testimony about some of our health institutions, like the University of Lagos Teaching Hospital and the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. I commend the CMDs of these hospitals and urge them to strive even higher for others to emulate. Nigeria expects the best of all our health institutions. But despite this, our focus is still on prevention, being better, than, being better and cheaper than cure. From what we know of COVID-19 so far, we cannot reduce infection rates significantly without adhering to the public health advisories, such as appropriate wearing of face masks, physical distancing, and avoiding crowded places to escape the exponential infection rate that sustains COVID-19 at present. If we accordingly take responsibility, we can save lives, including our own and that of our beloved ones. The evidence on the side of wearing a mask to protect yourself and others is now incontrovertible. We should all comply. The Federal Ministry of Health, through the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, now has a total of 59 molecular diagnostic laboratories for COVID-19 active, 
activated with a little improvement in logistics the lack of av availability of testing capacity should not be a tenable excuse anymore i'm pleased to mention that all states of the federation including the fct are receiving support from the COVID-19 response through the Regional Disease Surveillance Enhancement Project. And as we announce this, with this support, all states of the Federation, we have 100 million Naira to enhance high impact priority response activities. The soon to be reactivated Basic Health Care Provision Fund will join the funding pool for states. The High Commissioner of India, as has been mentioned just now, led a delegation of the High Commission to Nigeria to the Ministry of Health on Friday, 17th, to donate essential medicines and commodities in support of the Nigerian government effort in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. We thank His Excellency, the High Commissioner, and the government and people of India for the gesture. I also use this opportunity to express appreciation once again to all our other partners who have continued to stand by us. The National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, NIPRID, has now shared its final report on the evaluation of the COVID-19 organic from Madagascar. The initial uh, temporary result had shown that its main ingredient is the same as Artemisia annua, which is grown in Nigeria. While the preparation at high dose showed activity in reducing frequency of cough, it did not show any evidence that it has a real curative property to, against the COVID-19 virus. However, we shall continue to support all genuine efforts towards finding local COVID-19 cures. The This Day Dome Isolation Center has finally started admitting COVID-19 patients, and it is the most comprehensive of our treatment centers, fully equipped to treat mild, severe, and even critical COVID cases. It has ventilators, oxygen concentrators, and dialysis machines. On behalf of His Excellency the President, I also express appreciation to the Coalition Against COVID-19 Group, who set up the center and the CP CBN, Central Bank of Nigeria, who is providing hospitality to staff and patients. Personnel will be deployed to man the place by the Federal Capital Territory, and they will join the expert team from Irua Teaching Hospital who have been assigned to ensure a smooth takeoff and mentor a critical mass of health workers to operate the center. On Tuesday, the 21st July, was the reporting day of the Ministerial Expert Committee, Advisory Committee on COVID-19, when the leadership of the Federal Ministry of Health and the agencies and departments received a second report from the chairman Professor Oyewale Tumori. The findings were highly instructive and will be shared with agencies, the PTF, and stakeholders. As we approach the Salah period and the time of prayers, I join all those who wish our Muslim brethren well and urge them not to forget the precautions that have been prescribed so as to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission. All over the world, mass gatherings have been linked with mass infections and casualties, as we see in other countries, and we see in the media every day. Uh, we also see that places where they had gatherings, where they opened up, had had to be shut down very quickly because of rising casualties, which is what we are trying to avoid so as not to overwhelm the capacity of our own health system. Since the risk of crowding can never be ruled out in places of worship 
and also pose a serious hazard for COVID-19 transmission. It is very wise that persons who are vulnerable, and as by vulnerable we mean people who are elderly, who are obese, who are in treatment for hypertension or diabetes or cancer or HIV or TB, or maybe they have had a transplant or any other condition that is chronic, should better stay at home and pray at home. I also strongly advise that travel anywhere be avoided during this period, except for critical reasons. It may be helpful to advise that citizens get the right nutrients in these uncertain times to ensure best chances to build your immunity and strengthen capacity to resist infections. Food should include good amounts of fruits, vegetables, and vitamins. In conclusion, I should like to remind all of us that even though COVID-19 can present symptoms like fever, similar to malaria, they are not the same. Symptoms like cough, sore throat, fever, loss of sense of taste or smell, or difficulty in breathing, headache, are less, uh, those, are the, those are the less common ones, or rather the, more com the, the less common ones are diarrhea, body pain, catar, shivering, and fatigue, especially when several of these symptoms occur together, may be suggestive of COVID, and a test is required. Please call your state hotline, or the 112 emergency line, or the NNC NCDC hotline, or visit a sample collection center near you, which can be found on the NCDC website now. Thank you for your attention. Chair of the Presidential Task Force and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, Honorable Ministers, gentlemen of the press, um, it's been a while, we missed you on Monday. So it's good to be back. Mondays are not the same without a press briefing with you. So today I thought to feed back a little bit on what we've been doing on the national strategy to scale up access to testing in Nigeria over the past a few weeks. It's obviously taken up a lot of our energy and it's important to feed back to you on where we are and where we hope to get to. Um, a few weeks ago, I announced this national strategy to scale up our testing, and we really adopted a five-pronged uh, approach to this. Uh, we set a target, which I made public, to test two million by the end of this month. But the target is a lot more than just the numbers because testing in itself is not a goal. Our goal through testing is to bring people into care, uh, accelerate them through the public health uh, uh, process, enable contact tracing to happen for those that um, are positive, and generally move the system along. Uh, that's the only way we can know where we are, restart our economy, live comfortably our own life. So everything about this disease is ultimately dependent on our ability to gain insights into transmission, which we need testing for. So the first point is just in terms of the number of labs. We now have 59 labs activated in 29 states and the FCT uh, across the country. So a lot of progress. We are working this week to cover the rest of the country. Right now, we have teams in Kebi uh, and Zamfara. Another team is in Gombe, and Taraba, uh, working to cover the country. So we're ve working very hard to make sure uh, testing is available to every uh, state in the country. There are currently 45 labs that can carry out uh, PCR, real-time PCR across the country, and we have um, the rest uh, gene expert labs activated. So. Um, 59 labs, uh, 59 testing labs across the country right now serving Nigerians, and we're trying to accelerate this as much as possible. Now, the second prong of this five-prong uh, approach 
is to leverage the high throughput labs that already existed for HIV and convert them to test for COVID. So of the six uh, PCR mega labs in Nigeria, we've activated two of them in the um, four uh, COVID, the National Reference Lab and the Defense Reference Lab in uh, Abuja. We have one in Lagos in Naima, one in Anambra, the Chukoma, uh, Chukwemeka Odumegu, Juku uh, University Teaching Hospital have been activated for COVID testing. So that's a very important part of our approach, leveraging on existing laboratory capacity for HIV uh, for COVID. Now the third prong, which many of you know about, is the gene expert, um, gene expert machines that are scattered around the country. We have over 400 of them um, in th 399 health facilities. But the challenge is not in the gene expert machines themselves, is that we need to provide an additional level of safety, they're called biosafety cabinets, in order to use this uh, for COVID. So, so far we have activated 13 of them in 10 states. So pushing very hard to make sure that with that gene expert technology, we can increase uh, access to testing. The fourth point is to include the private sector in our testing architecture. Uh, so we've been working very hard with the private sector across Nigeria to include them, but they, they themselves have seen that it's not as easy as we might originally have thought. So um, we now have five in Lagos and two are almost there in Abuja. So we're hoping that um, the, once we have activated the two in Abuja, then we'll have um, uh, seven, sorry, there are seven in Lagos and two. There were originally five, there are two more accredited recently. So we now have seven and we'll have two in Abuja. And slowly uh, that will increase the capacity I had the couple in Port Harcourt that are also making progress. So with the inclusion of the private sector, we should be able to expand our testing even further. And we'll keep building as we go along. The fifth um, prong of this, our strategy, is to explore the role of rapid diagnostic test kits. So we've been working with the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria to validate a number of kits. There are two that are showing good promise. So that validation process is ongoing at the moment. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to know at least whether those first two that showed the most problems are able to be included into our testing algorithm. So those are the approaches we're using to increase our testing capacity. But the other challenge, like you, you know, is many Nigerians have been complaining about the ability to get their test results uh, quickly. Now, there are two channels for this. Firstly, it's from the NCDC directly. Uh, secondly, uh, from the state epidemiologists, from whom you have to uh, get your lab results anyway, just like for any other disease. So what we've been doing is uh, create a, a, a platform, an online platform. So just like um, those that are used to buying jam forms, uh, you, once you have been tested and a result has been sent, you will get a code, and you can use that code to go, on to, go online, get, uh, download your result if you need a printed version, be able to print it out and use it for whatever you want to use it for. Uh, so that platform is almost ready. We'll be piloting it in Abuja first. And once it demonstrates uh, its utility, uh, we'll scale it up across the country. So whoever has been tested can access their results once they've been notified that their results are ready through a text message that, would, that they will get on the phones that they register with the system. So through that, we'll increase access and the timeliness of the results. So you can see from all of these how hard the entire system is working to improve access to testing. And all of this will be an incredible improvement, not only for COVID. Of course, we're implementing this for COVID. But you can imagine that all of this will serve Nigeria for many years to come, whether you have Lassa, yellow fever, in fact, any infectious disease. And hopefully, we'll be able to actually roll this up out for all the other infectious diseases, including uh, TB. Uh, in our country. So a lot of the innovation happening right now will serve the country for many years to come, uh, many years into the future. So this is really to thank all our partners, the WHO, the Africa CDC, WAHO, from whom we got a lot of uh, test reagents very recently, for all their support in building our testing architecture. We're very committed to taking this forward the Global Fund, UNICEF, so many other agencies have really been working with us to build up testing. 
Of course, the federal government of Nigeria has been our biggest con um, supporter and enabled us the resources, and um, I don't foresee any challenge in terms of uh, test kits in the near future because we're really ramping up um, a stockpile of reagents across the country. Of course, the National Assembly has been very generous in supporting uh, all the work that we're doing, and that is really an example of a collaborative effort across the country. But I think the most important people to acknowledge this evening are medical lab scientists that do the work. Uh, the 24 hours at the National Reference Lab, you, feel, you find lab technicians, uh, lab scientists working. It's the same across labs across the country, working in dangerous situations. Many of them have been infected themselves and have come back to work. We're very grateful for their efforts and their diligence. And I'd like to use my last seconds today to really thank all of you, all the lab technicians, all the lab scientists that have worked and continue working very hard on behalf of all of us to make sure those test results uh, get back to patients on time and enable the entire system to respond to this outbreak. So thank you very much. Uh, the Chairman of the Presidential Task Force, um, Honorable Ministers, uh, members of the Presidential Task Force, um, gentlemen of the press, um, good evening. So today I would like to address the issue of uh, misinformation with regards to COVID and particularly the perception that COVID infects only certain populations. As mentioned earlier by the Chairman, um, COVID has no respect for anybody. It's a, a very egalitarian virus that believes in the principle of equality. It's ready to infect anybody. It's certainly not a virus that discriminates. It doesn't know whether you are rich or poor, healthy or not. And it is absolutely not an elite disease. We know of many that are poor that have been infected with the virus. We know of many in the rural areas that are getting sick from COVID, while many have contracted it and are not even aware that they've had it. This is why it is important for us to continue to be vigilant and take steps to protect ourselves. There's no doubt that people are tired of COVID. There's no, no doubt that we are all tired of the pandemic. It has gone on for quite a while. But remember, the virus does not tire. It is not fatigued. It is looking for any opportunity to infect us. We should not give it that opportunity. It's important that we continue to ensure citizens' safety by prioritizing and ensuring that we follow the guidelines provided by the PTF on this. Um, the other issue I wanted to talk about briefly is the issue of uh, communications and strategy change with regards to this. As you are aware, uh, through our risk communication pillar, we continue to do weekly polls, NOI polls, targeting thousands of Nigerians, both at the national and specific uh, state levels. The PTF will be adjusting its communications approach and sensitization strategy based on our polling data and grassroots um, intelligence. We are trying to reach more and more Nigerians with life-saving information to mitigate the COVID infection. We are also trying to change people's behavior and ensure that the best preventive measures are applied across board by all of us. In this regard, the National Orientation has been conducting community mobilization and sensitization programs in the hotspot local government areas uh, linked with high burden of the disease. This includes sensitization on the use of face masks in motor parks for drivers and passengers, motorized campaigns in markets, door-to-door uh, -door public awareness campaigns, as well as advocacy to community leaders. The private sector is a potent partner in this regard, and we continue to work with them to utilize their structures, especially 
uh, when it comes to the social media and to share data-driven messaging and behavioral change information to the grassroots. The task force is also partnering with the Federation of Muslim Women's Association and the Christian Associations of Nigerian Women to support our aggressive approach towards behavior change at the grassroots. I would also like to mention the critical partnership with other major radio stations, including Voice of Nigeria, uh, Radio Nigeria, Wazobia, Ray Power, and a lot of others, too numerous to mention, in order to develop COVID-related programming that features COVID survivors, religious and traditional leaders, frontline healthcare workers, and other members of the public so that we can foster a dialogue around COVID-19 and address some of the misinformation as regards whether or not COVID exists and whether or not it is really a health issue. It is only by working collectively and together that we can beat this disease. Um, finally, as mentioned by the chairman, next week uh, we will be addressing the issue of Salah. Uh, we will be liaising with our religious leaders and build on the guidance we have already provided for places of worship to come up with a clear advisory on how Nigerians should best conduct themselves during this festive occasion so that they remain safe and we all remain safe. Uh, we will also be providing a summary of achievements by our key partners, including CACOVID, in line with our transparency principles. Thank you. Thank you very much, National Coordinator. We'll move to the question session now. If you're ready, we're ready for your questions. Mr. Chairman, members of the tax force, my colleagues, good afternoon. My name is Nancy Oyedia Orom from AIT. I would like to start with you, Mr. Chairman, since the Foreign Affairs Minister is not here. So just yesterday, we got a report from the United Arab Emirates giving Nigerians whose visas have expired up till the 17th of August to leave their country or face legal consequences. So I would like to find out what are, what are the implications of this for Nigerians who are yet to be evacuated from, from that country and those who do not have resources to pay for uh, their air ticket to be airlifted back to Nigeria. Now to the Minister of Health, so I'm sorry I have to bring up this issue again of uh, hospitals rejecting patients. Just yesterday, Dark Communications PLC lost a senior consultant as a result of uh, this rejection by hospitals. Yes, he tested for positive. He was still awaiting his result and uh, because of the symptoms was degenerating. So he was taken to about three hospitals here in Abuja and he was rejected. Eventually, when he could assess medical uh, uh, facilities, he gave up and died. I think just schools are yet to resume. So I don't know if the, 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 the ministry is aware of this. And also still staying with you, sir. WIAC is a West African examination that about five schools are supposed to be participating. But Nigeria seems to be the only country that have taken a U-turn from participating in this exam. So I want to know, have you taken out time to do like a peer review or analysis of what some of these countries are doing that... Uh, that Nigeria could actually do also just to accommodate some of the peculiarities that is a major bone of contention for us. And also, I'm, I want to believe that since the decision was taken for Nigeria not to participate, you have been engaging with WIAC, maybe for a possible reschedule for just Nigeria alone as a country. Finally, sir, in the guidelines that you reeled out for uh, safe resumption of schools, you said that Schools should assess themselves and then send a report to the Ministry of Education. I'm a bit worried how authentic that report will be, making them the judge of themselves. I don't know if your ministry have come up with mechanism to check the preparedness of the schools for possible resumption. Thank you.
Good evening, sir. My name is Friday Okeribwe. I'm a reporter with Channels TV. I, I think I will just start on the note of that uh, uh, school's resumption, and I will direct that question to the Minister of State for Education. There, there's been so much mixed information online as to when schools will be resuming. I'd like you to clear the air. Is there a particular date that schools will be resuming? My second question will, will go to the PTF chairman. I would like you to comment on this. It has to do with Naira Mali. Some time ago, we know that he flouted the protocols. I'm asking this question because we know that when rules are made and uh, sanctions are not applied, people just, just don't listen to such rules. We've made so many rules here, but a lot of persons have... Um, uh, flattered these rules without consequences. What is the update on Naramali? And then uh, my second question, we go to the PTF national coordinator. Yesterday, when you briefed the, the Nigeria Governors Forum, you announced that uh, the federal government made a provision of 2.1 billion Naira each as an intervention, additional inter health uh, funding for each state. My question is, how many states are going to benefit from that provision? Will it include states that, in quotes, are COVID-free? And the second question from that is, do you have a particular – okay, I, I, I thought it's not uh, listening. Do you have a mechanism, a strategy on ground to monitor the – the use of that fund that the federal government uh, is giving to the states, as you announced at the NGF yesterday. My other question, we go to the Director General of NCDC. It has to do with an event that happened at the Gogolada uh, Treatment Center at the weekend. It's an unfortunate one anyway, because someone who is close to, to me uh, actually developed symptom and is he lives close to Gogolada, so he went straight there. And uh, of course, expectedly, since there is no test that shows that he's a COVID patient, he was not admitted. And then two days later, he got tested. But before the result could come out, he developed very critical uh, uh, a symptom. He couldn't breathe and was referred. He went back to Gogolada, where they also said they can't admit him as a patient because the result is yet to come. So the question is this, what is the procedure actually for admitting someone in the uh, uh, treatment centers? And you partially talked about it, but why does it take this long for people to actually get their results? Because some are dying in the process of waiting for their results to come out. And then the Minister of Health, I would like you to comment on, on, on this, uh, uh, my last set of questions. The, United Kingdom has a new uh, policy now that allows healthcare workers to come into the country and get visa on arrival. This is actually driving a lot of medical workers from countries, especially in Africa, in Nigeria inclusive. What is the government doing in that regard to ensure that the little health workers that we have that are not even enough for us will not take advantage of that and all of them migrate to such countries? And secondly, is the government also doing anything regarding those vaccines that show early signs of potency that countries are already mopping up in their countries, like the United States and even the UK? They're already mopping up some of these vaccines, three of those vaccines that were announced last week. They have high potency uh, results uh, from their preliminary, preliminary uh, testing. Are we planning anything similar to that so that we'll not be left out at the end of the day? Thank you. Or Rachel Abuja from the News Agency of Nigeria. My first question is for the Minister of Health. Sir, Nigerians will like to know how far we've gone with the renovation of seven centers in the 18 or 20 local government hotspots for COVID-19 in the country. And more so, we'd like to know where this fund is coming from because it's said to be 1.2 billion. We don't know if it's Naira or dollars. So we'd like to know if there are donations or grants all the state gov government or government will be paying for this. And also, where will these donations be taking place? 
states, which of the states, so we can have a follow up. To the DG and CDC, sir. So Lagos and Kano states are the two leading states in COVID-19 testing. And you just mentioned that uh, Lagos has uh, seven centers to test. Why Kano has five? And let's not forget that um, Lagos test posit uh, positivity is between 20 to 40 percent, while Kano is between one to two percent. Now, we all know that uh, in terms of, um, let's say, um, both state differs in terms of climate, climatic uh, condition. Now, in addition, there has been suggestions by different countries and science group on the role of um, possible role of um, humidity and temperature in the rate of transmission for COVID-19. Now, I would like to know if we are planning to record the relevant data to enable studies on the possible correlation between COVID-19 and environmental condition. Thank you. The Chairman, National Coordinator, members of the PTF, my colleagues. My name is Amaka Ode. I report for Arise News. Well, from your opening statements, most of my questions were answered, but just remaining a few. And I'd like to start with the DG of the NCDC. Well, you spoke about ramping up our test capacity. What is our capacity at the moment? How many reagents do we have and how far um, would that take us? And um, my next question also is for you. How many tests do we conduct averagely? Speaking daily now, because we're seeing this, uh, uh, um, you know, result come out every day and we're seeing the numbers really go. Yes, we know we haven't picked yet, but we need to know average how many tests we conduct. And finally, to the Minister of Health. Well, sometime about two weeks ago, you had actually announced that hospitals in Abuja will become um, sample collection sites. How far with that announcement? I asked this because the Gariki Hospital, I had a reason to go there and there was a suspected case of COVID, but they say they are not accredited to take any samples or even hold any patient there. And also some time ago, you had spoken about hospitals creating a space, you know, even though a person hasn't um, carried out a COVID-19 test, but at least a place where they can be managed instead of being turned back. Is that applicable to every hospital in the FCT and across the country, or is that for specific health facilities? We need that clarification so that way people know where to go just in case. Thank you. I could ask you, you're more related in Nigeria. Jackie, Jadu, Bubu, Baye, me, Rale. Ma fair minister of food to Lira Niti Abele, Serito, Adeleke, Mamura, Combawa Down, and my berry, it's more fair berry, or one year or lay. A cocker, more fair berry, Lati, BT, Elisha, Moon, Mamma, or Tichanes, or Cocker Berry, Nipa, it's all you are want to one year, we, the lay was. What should a man who pay or monkey carry conny jamba motto? What's it be lost in lay was? Should money to repay our COVID 19 to Anita? How many to you want to do it? Oh, the baby, oh, dear Lord, be in jail. I just saw we pay a lay bojumu, a bioku dear cartoon. You love a bujani be by, you lay it to Shelley. A cage you pay a me, Lolo, your king or she, I yell woo. How no COVID 19? Latin more boy, I lot it out to Lododo. Nay, me, I know COVID 19. Nito to repay, oh, she, 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 Kori ko un yege ko wa pada lo le de le boyo ojo ke jabo ojo keta ki arun covid 19 bere bawo lo se fe se nje oni lati pada lo se ayawo ni abi kini igbese to ye ko se eketa nipa ti eto eko ipinle oyo ari pe o so pe on fe je ki awon mo lewe ko pada si lewe sugbon ta mu keta ti awon si to tem ko si nkan to jo be ni ipinle oyo ki le le so nipa eleyi fun ati je ki awon obi ki o le yin won ni yeke yeke ba kan na ni ipinle ogun okay i'll say it in english so that you can understand sir <laughs> so on um um <laughs> so in ogun state sir ni ipinle ogun 
My minister, sir. Ni yi pin logun. Isele kan sele ni de. De bi wi pe arakunrin yi won ni pe ko tele ofin eyi ti won fun won lori oarun covid 19. Sugbon nigba to de bi ton ti fe je ni ya won ni ko mu owo wa. Owo to ri ko pe o lo o pada won gba moto e sile. Nigba to ma pada de won ni pa won o le gba wo yen. O se ni laanu pe oju won loju won be yen ni arakunrin ti gbe ogun je to de gba beko. Sha fe so pe lara arun. Lara won ti arun covid 19 pa ni eleyi ni abi aisan owo lo je ki arun pa ele to wa gbe yin ni pe mo fe ro ile ise ele to ile ra lori ilede nigeria awon ni mo ijile po lori ilede yi to wo je odo awon mi gan te ti sa lo se ba won dokita la so pe won fe sa lo si ilu eyin bo awon ni mo ijile gan lo nitori pe kini o da wi pe won ki e won 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 kada ma si ki won ni lo kere jori ilede nigeria lo mo fe ki ijile ise ile to le ra ko wo awon bi ncc nigeria communication commission awon nitda ati federal ministry of tech science and technology lati le ro awon odo yi lati pada wa lati le sise eyi to dara kon ba le ran wa lowo lori ilede nigeria e ma je ka so awon eyan ti ani ni ori ilede inu for the federal minister of education sir so that you understand it in english what i ask my minister it's about education, sir. In our state now, the government said the students, the people can resume in September. There is nothing like thought time. What can you say about this? Thank you very much, sir. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, the chairman and members of the PTF. My name is Mitaire Ikben. I report for the NTA. I have just one question for the DG of the NCDC. Uh, it's good to know that we now have about 59 uh, molecular laboratories nationwide, but there's still a problem of getting across to the NCDC. Abuja is a peculiar case. People call and they say they cannot reach the NCDC. In fact, it is almost becoming a case of if you are not connected, you cannot reach the NCDC. If you don't know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can get across to the NCDC, then you can't reach the NCDC. And it's as bad as for some of us here as a journalist, we have some complaints have come to us and we have forwarded them to uh, the appropriate quarters and it still gets up to three days before uh, persons are attended to. I know that these complaints are not new to you as uh, the DG, and that's why we want to know what you are doing to bridge the gap uh, in getting across to the NCDC. Thank you. Thank you. We've taken all the questions. The chairman, PTF, will round it up after all the responses. We'll begin with the Honorable Minister of Health. So thank you for the questions. The first one is about uh, patients being rejected in the treatment centers in hospitals. That is regrettable. It is not what should be happening anymore. Uh, yeah, it is true. I had a meeting with the Honorable Minister of the FCT uh, a couple of weeks ago in which we dwelt on this topic and uh, called all medical directors and chief medical directors of both federal and FCT-owned hospitals to pre impress upon them that nobody should be rejected. We are going to repeat that with private hospitals. We are preparing the grounds for that to call private hospitals and also speak to them on the same topic. The policy of the government is that all persons who come to hospitals should be given attention no matter how basic, and to call for help. But of course, we are still working on improving our programs. And uh, part of that is the communication we give here every day, that uh, people who are tested positive should not disappear. You should register yourself. We say that every day here. And today, I also pay tribute to 
uh, influential persons who declare, yes, I tested, I was positive, I'm going to treatment. It's a good example. So we believe that if more people were doing that, then the number of surprises of people fall suddenly ill at night and they are looking from one place to the other, the number will be less if people will actually comply with that. And uh, I express my deep regrets to the family of the person you mentioned. Um, I think we said that communication. I deeply regret my condolence to the person and to the family. It's a deep loss. We, that's the kind of thing we are trying to avoid, that we lose anybody to COVID-19. We're always talking about uh, reducing fatalities. And we can only do that with cooperation of all citizens. And part of it is that anyone who tests positive should present themselves for treatment. If they have comorbidities especially, they should in fact uh, go on admission so as they are supervised uh, uh, all through the time. Um, the other strategy we have is that though the, we have instructed every hospital to also be ready to test, ability to test. That one is still ongoing. I think there are about seven of them now that are already prepared to do testing, to take samples. Uh, the uh, 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 DG of NCDC will speak more about that because they set up this um, um, system that you can collect samples at certain hospitals, various hospitals. It's not a big deal, but the preparer are equipped, trained, and ready to be able to collect samples and have them collected. That is in progress. And then we are also setting up, uh, which is already functioning, an ambulance system that you can make a call and then the ambulance will pick you up and take you to where you will be treated so that you are not the one running from one place to the other looking for a place of treatment. So that is already in the work here. We did one, in, we set it up in Kano and it's worked very well there. And uh, we're setting up here in, a, in Abuja. I was given a report this morning that they're already uh, operating skeletally and they'll be scaled up. So that if you call a number, you have symptoms, you're in diagnosis, distress, you can call and be taken to where you definitely uh, be treated. Because not everybody knows the best place to go to. If you go to a hospital next door, which is uh, not ready for you, they will tell you they won't uh, be able to treat you. But we also urge even such hospitals to at least give oxygen and then call for the ambulance. All uh, clinics should know the ambulance number by now. So uh, we request that all citizens be ready to comply with these guidelines that we have given. Uh, if you have comorbidities, please report. And if you feel that uh, you are getting bad, funny symptoms, which I listed just now, I listed them during my speech today. If you have any of those symptoms, you have to go early enough to an accredited hospital for testing. Don't wait and say, okay, till tomorrow you will go, because COVID does not know day or night. So if you get symptoms at, at, at 6 p.m., you say, okay, tomorrow you will go, it may be too late. It doesn't know, it won't wait for you. Nothing is going to wait. So you have to act fast and avoid situations where things now become uh, an emergency, which would also not uh, have been. So please, everybody report in time, and we shall reduce, that's our objective, to reduce the uh, casualties. Now, with the question of uh, vaccines, yes, uh, we are observing the development on the vaccine. There are several vaccine candidates being tested in various countries right now. Uh, everybody's scrambling to get the vaccines. The uh, High Commissioner of India spoke in that respect when he visited us some time ago, uh, just a couple of days ago, to say that it, India is also working on developing a vaccine. Uh, the, uh, I've heard the uh, uh, the president of China make the same statement. In America, they obviously do a lot of tests, and the UK uh, and other countries in Europe, everybody is scrambling for vaccine. Now, uh, His Excellency the President has uh, started an initiative by which the African bloc of countries should work towards getting access to vaccines. That initiative uh, is, uh, is uh, ongoing to be able to make sure that Africans are not shortchanged. Sure uh, when, he, when vaccines do come out. And it's our prayer that these vaccines come out in uh, large areas, I mean in large numbers and in multiple uh, sites. Um, with regard
regard to the hotspots and the 2.1, I will leave that with national coordinator. He is the one uh, looking at the, the hotspots in the country, the very local governments that are uh, uh, particularly suffering from uh, the widespread infection of uh, COVID-19, and also the question of allocation of uh, funds from uh, those sources. Now, we have spoken about the sample collection sites. Our objective is to make sure that all hospitals are able to take samples. Taking samples is not a big deal. All you need is a good logistics to collect all of them. Uh, most of the uh, uh, um, PCR machines have capacity to test large numbers at once. They can test several, uh, do large numbers. So if you collect all the samples, you can do one test, you can get many results coming up. They are, as we know now, they are being used uh, at less than 40% capacity. So it, the logistics is what has to be done uh, properly and uh, with, with some more experience. Um, the management of cases, it's not every hospital. There are specialized hospitals that are doing COVID-19. Isolation hospitals, we are told, we've named them here before. Many times those are the only ones taking care of uh, COVID-19. But any other hospital that intends or desires to participate in treating COVID-19 patients can request for accreditation. A team will come and accredit the hospital and uh, uh, ex specialists can help to demarcate the areas, the so-called clean and dirty areas for you and give you necessary training and make sure you have the necessary staff. So that is possible, but if you are not accredited, this is not something that anybody should be treating anyhow. Uh, okay, with regard to the doctors, well, you see, this uh, period is a very uncertain period where all countries are looking for doctors from everywhere and trying to make sure that you don't only think of buying equipment, buying commodities, buying that. You also look, want to increase your manpower, and they are ready to take manpower from everywhere. Uh, so we are trying to see that we keep our own manpower here. Uh, there, as you know, there are incentives that have been given, like life insurance and uh, hazard allowance and so on. All those ones have been provided. And uh, we hope to continue to chatting with our resident doctors and urging our uh, state governments to actually employ the doctors who are uh, unemployed and make, uh, make sure that the availability of manpower for health uh, is uh, not compromised. Uh, so I think that uh, that will be the subject of conversation when we speak with the NMA and the Association of Resident Doctors. So I think that is uh, all we have here. The number of hospitals that can take samples will continue to increase. We hope that we can be able to help many hospitals to at least take care of um, emergencies that come in and then call for help that you have an ambulance system that will come and pick up the patient from where they first arrived and take them to a designated treatment center. So when that system starts working, we see the value of a medical emergency system. As you know, um, we are working on what we call a national emergency medical system and uh, medical service and ambulance system. National Emergency Medical Service and Ambulance System, NEMSAS, which is under development uh, to be able to provide services of all kinds of emergencies, including obstetric. Those who can't, uh, who have uh, delivery issues and so on, you can call a number and the uh, ambulance will come to pick you up. Paramedics will be on board. Uh, that system is uh, under development. We have a consultant uh, helping us with uh, developing uh, that uh, system. Thank you. So thank you, gentlemen of the press. Um, uh, I think we'll start with Friday. Uh, Friday, thank you very much. It's really unfortunate the experience uh, your, your colleague had. And I think the Honorable Minister has already addressed the issue of waiting and um, rejecting patients. You know, no hospital should be doing this. Most hospitals have set up uh, holding areas where there's, when there's uncertainty about a diagnosis and the individual is showing uh, symptoms, uh, every hospital should have a holding area. We've been supporting 
hospitals. We have an IPC team that has been supporting all the tertiary hospitals in Nigeria to set up triage centers. A triage center is when you come in, you test. Uh, when you come in, you're screened. If your symptoms are similar to what could be COVID, you put, you're put in a holding area until uh, we can determine the diagnosis. But, you know, the tools that we have to force hospitals to do these things, uh, you know, we live in the country we live in. So we keep pushing, we train, we support, um, uh, and we hope that eventually we'll get better. You know, uh, maybe whatever hospital is watching this, um, there's no way around this. We, we have to live with this situation for the next uh, one year, at the very best. So we can't turn our patients away. We the technology that we have for testing, even if it works optimally, um, cannot provide us a test as quickly as we need to. So we absolutely need to set up a system where we can put patients in a ward or in a holding area where they can be seen and cared for safely. The IPC measures uh, with which we can manage our patients safely until we can determine whether they have COVID-19 or not. So we'll continue to work through different points in making this testing uh, quicker. We've worked extremely hard in developing this platform. It will go live soon, but it will not solve all the problems. So we really need every healthcare worker in the country to help us engage with this problem. And maybe together we can uh, find a way around it. Um, Rachel, you asked about the difference in positivity in uh, Lagos and Kano, you're right. Um, what determines that is very difficult to ascertain. It depends a lot on the uh, pressure of the initial infections, the pressure of transmission thereafter, and several other factors. If humidity or temperature plays a role, it's definitely something we're looking. In fact, this morning there was a meeting of the National uh, COVID Research Consortium, a whole consortium of partners is co-led by NCDC and the National and Nigeria Institute for Medical Research includes TED Fund, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, several universities across the country. They have come back together to form a strong consortium uh, to do this type of research because this is not the type of research that one person can do in his small office. You really have to uh, pull your forces together. So there's an amazing evolution of expertise growing and I've said here uh, several, if this outbreak uh, reignites a passion for science, we would have really pushed this country forward. Uh, it is doing that for health security. It will do that for science in different ways as, as well. Um, Amaka, you asked a few questions about testing of our current capacity. So far, we've tested 250,000 uh, uh, people. Uh, we have the capacity at the moment to test about the same amount with the uh, reagents in the country already. So we can do double that number uh, right now. Uh, of course, um, you know, there are many limitations in here and there, but uh, that's where we are. At the moment, we're testing 3,000 3, to 4,000 uh, tests every day uh, in the different labs in the network. So on a good day, about 4,000, you know, it's anywhere between 3,000 and 4,000. So uh, pushing very hard to keep increasing those numbers and increase the efficiency of uh, uh, testing. Um, Mitare, you know, you asked about ability to reach NCDC. I, I think, you know, that has improved a lot. The challenge is that people really don't know the difference between reaching and NCDC doesn't provide, can't evacuate patients. That's an FCT responsibility in Abuja. So if you get through to NCDC, what we do is refer you back to the FCT lines. And sometimes there's a delay in doing that. Um, you know, so we keep working with them to improve that patient evacuation process. But mostly it's not the NCDC lines actually that is a challenge now because an NCDC cannot activate the next steps. Uh, what we often do is give you clinical advice, advi check your symptoms, see whether you require evacuation. If you do, then refer you on to the uh, relevant state. We are national helpline, so we support all the states, but we're uh, at high level, um, uh, communicator. The next level is to provide you the access to the state lines, and it's only the state. If you're in FCT, yes, it's the FCT, but any other state to then organize your evacuation into care. But having said that, um, uh, like the Honorable Minister said, we have now supported the FCT in activating uh, walk-in centers to get tested. There's one in 
the ICC that is functional, FMC Jabi is functional, uh, Maitama District Hospital is functional, uh, the This Day Dome, the testing center there is functional as a walk-in center. So these four centers, yes, you can walk in there and get tested and your results will be made available to you. The delay sometimes, like I said, is not in the testing, it's in the resulting process. And this online platform will help us solve that. So, you know, we're being very open with our problems and our challenges and the work that we're doing to solve all of them. And we will get better at all of this. So uh, please bear with us wherever um, things have been a bit slow but uh, everybody's hands on deck to make uh, results available quicker uh, to everyone that needs those results in order for you to come into care and in order for the contact tracing and the rest of the public health uh, response to continue. Thank you. Um, I think there were some questions regarding, one was the issue of uh, Jabi Lake Mool, and just to make it clear, the PTF certainly um, um, has repeatedly said that we will not um, sit down and uh, just watch while people clearly flout uh, the rules that have been put in place for uh, the good of the public. Um, we have formally requested for investigation of the Jabi Lake Mool, um, and at the highest level we've also requested for, um, uh, for legal processes to come in place. I believe that's still being investigated. I have requested for an update um, from the relevant um, authorities. And uh, once we have an update, we'll let you know. Um, with regards to um, additional interventions from the Nigeria Governors Forum, my understanding is that the Nigeria Governors Forum meeting is supposed to be a closed meeting. So I'm surprised you were able to uh, get um, details of that meeting. But nevertheless, there are several funding streams that are coming to the states. Hmm? Um, some of those funding streams are currently under negotiation, including a World Bank uh, credit facility. Uh, some of those funding streams already, there's already money that is going to some of the states. In fact, some of the states have already received a small amount to start off with. There are additional funds that are coming directly from the federal government based on the National Assembly budget that has just been passed. Um, that money has not been released yet. Um, but it's certainly in the budget, 2020 revised budget for the states. We have developed a template working with the state governments and the Nigeria Governors Forum that outlines the, the, the key parameters that will be used to allow states to access these funds. Uh, and we are working very closely with all the states. Some of the states have already fulfilled some of these requirements. For those that haven't fulfilled it, we are working very closely with them to make sure that um, they fulfill the requirements in line with the national, um, national COVID response. And as soon as they do so, we will sign them off. Uh, from the point of view of hotspots, yes, there are 11 local government areas at the moment based on, uh, on a combination of um, criteria that we have outlined. Uh, those criteria include the number of cases. They also include the proportion of uh, positive cases by each uh, local government, and also the rate of rise of new infections. Uh, based on all three parameters, we identified 11 local governments in four states, uh, Lagos, Ogun, Rivers, and Bielsa State. We've already started making a lot of progress, particularly in Lagos, where some of the interventions that we have place, put in place in relation to risk communication, for instance, in relation to additional testing, and as well as um, household surveillance, etc., has come into, 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 into place. But your specific question regarding community support centers, so we have a proposal which is currently based on uh, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency where we will be identifying buildings um, that can be converted into community support centers in relation to these 11 local government areas. That funding has not been secured yet. We, we have applied for the funding through the UN Single Basket and um, it is not a billion dollars. No, it's, um, it's certainly not. It's far from that. It's in Naira. And um, as soon as that funding is made available, we will commence the process of um, funding the community support centers. And it's completely different to the plan within the COVID budget to uh, build an isolation and treatment facility in every, every state. 
linked to a federal medical center or a federal teaching hospital. That budget is a federal government budget that has not been released. It is part of the Federal Ministry of Health, Health Infrastructure Budget. So it is linked to the new budget that the National Assembly has passed. And as far as I know, no money has been released for that purpose yet. Thank you. Honorable Minister of State Education. Good evening. your state money uh, okay sorry i thought they said i should answer in europe G good evening let's start again good evening for your state a, 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 or your state this speaks to what we are doing here we believe that this is a uh, our response is a national response. We believe that all the states should actually be working together. The PTF provides national guidance, and we expect that states will then use what information that they have gotten there from to uh, interpret them locally. I repeat again that um, the, that education is a concurrent matter on our, our legislative list. And um, states are free, actually, to make those kind of provisions within the guidance that the PTF has provided. And that is why the guidance we gave, somebody may see it as that there has been a change or some sort of misunderstanding. And I have spoken repeatedly that if you look at what the chairman of the PTF presented in June, he said he's not giving a date for school resumption. That what he has proposed and what the PTF has proposed is that in view of YX timetable, it will be advisable for those who can to try and make arrangements to use the facilities that are available. That is exactly what is in the guidance we gave. That guideline suggests to schools that you should please evaluate what you have done like a template, we gave a template there, tick, checklist of what we have said is the requirement you need to put in place to be able to use these facilities. And we've given a cut-off date for 29th of July to expect all the responses from the center so that we can then know who needs help. If you're problem is that you have already gotten the bucket and a tap, but you don't know how to insert the tap to the bucket so that it starts turning it into running water. Then we need to know. As simple, as, as, such a simple step may be important. We need to know if the problem is that the teachers in your look, at your own location cannot be provided with masks. If the school is unable to do that, we need to know ahead. Because States that have given dates for the resumption of schools are doing that and setting out a timetable along the lines of what we have already explained. And they are free to do this. What we then must answer is the WIAC timetable. Are you able to meet up with that date? Many states have come back to us and said they are unable to meet up with that date. 
which is why the Minister of Education explained that it would be dangerous to move children out on those, uh, that day, and that it is not proper for Wayek to then continue to insist on those dates. Therefore, we have requested that Wayek give us, give us and the schools some time to, to meet up. Now, Wayek, unfortunately, is unable to wholesomely move the exams. But we have also worked out a negotiated timeline with Wayek such that what we call peculiar Nigerian subjects, which in the language of Wayek are subjects that are only held in Nigeria. That's Igbo language, Hausa language, Yoruba language. These are language course, uh, exams. These are uh, some, what we call peculiar. They are peculiar only to Nigeria. The Ghanaians will take what we call the Fante, I'm sure they, they have their own language. Those are peculiar to them. They do not, those exams will not happen in Nigeria. But they're all in the first part of the, of the um, uh, timetable. So by come, we will now work out a domestication module that will take our peculiar subjects behind after we have done generals. This will buy us the time we need for all of us to be able to come to uh, be at par with the rest of West Africa and operating at the same time. Because the unanimity with which Wayek has always worked is still very important to us. Nigeria is not moving away from it. The option would have been to go to November to take the GCE external exams. Nigeria is carefully studying that if in the fact that everything fails, we will may go to that. But we ha are working assiduously to keep within this time frame so that everybody will work within this. But the key factor of safety, say we will not open these schools until we see and are sure that children can go in there with as a maximum safety as possible. We can be 100% sure. But then we've given out those templates. And the same faith we have in Nigerians, are the, the faith, because when my sister asked her, she said, how do we trust that the people will build the template, they will, how do we monitor them? The same way we feel about Nigerians, I, we believe at the same way their teachers and their owners and proprietors will feel about their children. We know that these children, yes, they are our children nationally, but sometimes the idea to give guidance is to ensure that they do the right thing. We do not believe that they will be callous with the lives of their children. In fact, if for anything, we expect them to tell us what their problems are so that we can then assist where necessary. Because we've made a request to the PTF looking at what it is that people may need or what may be the problems and to find solutions around them. Solutions are not just give you money. Solutions may be giving you what is available within the context of what your problem is. And that we are working on with them. And we are engaging stakeholders again. Post 29th, we will meet with stakeholders on the 30th in readiness for opening by via, via Zoom. Because uh, as you have heard, after that there will be public holiday. So we want to be able to cap this around with all the commissioners of education around the state, all the chairmen of SUBEB, the Association of Private uh, 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 School Owners, and the Nigerian Union of Teachers. So there is no controversy. The Ministry of Education has at no time, I don't know why anybody would think that there is some sort of uh, bifurcation in what we have said, none at all. It's been, we've been consistent with the message from the time the uh, PTF chairman announced it to say there is some guidance that needs to be done along the paths of how we will open schools. And that guidance is still what we are staying with. Any assistance we want in those clear, or whatever any state has then declared, are things that are working in consonance with that. Thank you.
Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, and all um, media representatives here present, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me start by thanking Emeka for responding to part of the part of the queries. Um dupe lowo arabirin abi odun popuola lati ile ise voice of nigeria mo de dupe lowo elegbe mi ti o je minister eh abele fun eto eko ti o ti se alaye nipa eh ikon ninu ibere yen eto je mo wipe a big color PTF T are really device. So she a to near papo. Fun be a shin does your or COVID nineteen. But both she wani a papo ye. I want a queen lay con con. Once she near bar a latty she I want con T o tono nitori pe eto tptf ni apapo o wa fun lati ma to awon ipinle sona dese se sugbon se se ko je bi pe ni ipinle kankan awon kankan wa to je pe o o wa tekule asi won so same national response ni now, to other questions. Ibere kini ni ipe omode kuni konwa to je ipe o ni ijamba oko. Ti won gbe lo si le iwo son. Shugon. Idi ipe won omo boya o ni COVID-19 abiko ni. Idi yen ni won wa ti omo yen ti o fi Nati Babelo. A room combined in Conto Tio Moon, Ibanu Jawafun Dokita. Any can into Baja Dokita be any tune, she, you told you from a license. T a license and bar Tobacco, Kunche in Conti, Oma Dumont, a Dokita, you know. So, Mofi as a coy by Ladura, he pay a delayed room by the shell, a cure long co cure two on you know. Go she and Contia Ferrara, go shelly. Mother, my pay, Nino, and Conti Minister Agba. Ni to a to a literati social ki se nkan ti a fe rarara ide yi ni a tin gbe igbese lati ri pe ani nkan ta le fi ma se ayewo ti mo le pe ni ayewo ni papapa ti an pe ni rapid diagnostic test mo tin so oro yen ti pe nkan to je dondon ki a ma se ni papa julo ni awon bi ti an pe ni accident and emergency centers ni gbogbo awon ilewu son wa nitori pe a fe ako ni ma ti won ba gbe alaisan wa o di do do ko je pe dokita to ma toju alaisan yen a fe mo bi pe se ko ni arun COVID-19. Ni iru ibadan yen o di dodon ko je pe aye wo ta le fi mo pe o ni COVID. Laarin iseju mewa si me dogun ni an lati ma wo a le duro de aye wo kan to ma lo si ibun wa ka ti kan ka ma wa ni ojo kan ojo meji be screening test ni 
mo de mo pe ptf ati eh ministry of health igbese en ti wa bayi lati le ni iru nkan be rapid test rapid diagnosis set to ri pe laarin iseju mewa si medogun ka le fi mo iyan o mi pe eniye a ni se pcr test abi molecular test a se ma se sugbon ni kia kia ta le sare mo o di dodon eh ibele keji ti arabirin opo olabirin ni pe igba melogun lo ye ke eyan ma se covid 19 test hmm eh in kontra mo ni pe ti eyan ba ni exposure si boye en to ni covid 19 ki ti eniyan gan ba ma ni arun yen in ko wa ta npe ni incubation period yen ni igba ti eyan ni exposure se en to ni to na ba ma ni in ba wo ni awon ta npe ni nkan ta npe ni symptoms apere pe kini ti wo ara elomi o man to bi ojo marun si bi ojo mejila sugbon bi ojo marun si ojo meje ohun lo se lo wopo eyan la se ma so bi pe en to ba ti ni exposure be ko lo si ihamo fun bi ojo mewa si ojo merinla in 14 days lati le ma wo ara e pe se ko je pe ohun na ti be si ni kini yi a de ma wo boya ohun na ma ni eh ara gbugbo na ni o abi ohun wu ko abi ofun dun abi ko gbo orun abi ko ni taste lati le fi mo bi pe boya kini ti na tin yoju si ohun na lara nigba te ni yen ba ti ri pe kini yen ti any symptom to ba ti ri igba ina ni o ye ko ti lo bere si wo bo n se ma se aye wo yen bi ijo marun si to ba ti ni exposure yen igba ta recommend ni yen nitori pe ko ma lo tun duro ju bo se ko ma lo tun pe sugbon to ba ti di bi ojo mewa abi ose meji to ba si nkan kan then kuni ni lati lo se aye o ibere keta ni nipa awon dokita abi awon osise eto ilera won le je na osin won le je eh won le wa ni kon sha wa ni bi ise eto ilera ti won kuro ni lo papa julo awon dokita to ri pe lai pe ila gbo pe awon dokita kan won fe kuro ni ilu lo si oke okun eh nkan to se wa lanu ni pe ki se ru asipo yi to ri pe awon dokita to wa nle gan eh won o to lati ka oju nkan to wa nle ta ba tun ri nkan to je kan ma kuro o ma je nkan ti o ni dumo wa ninu sugbon o ye ka gbe yewo pe ki lo te fa gan papa nkan bi meta bi merin lo ma nfaru nkan be ikini ni pe nkan ti awon lo yin bo n pe ni conditions of service ntori ti ma ma ti yan ba lo bi se kan o fe lo gba se wa ma biri aba ma so won po ye bayi la ma so fun e awon allowances bayi lo ma ni ara condition of service ni to ba da pe ko o ku de ka to eh o le ma mu iwuri wa fun awon eyan lati gba ru ise be iru nkan be n pe do nkan to nsele lori ile ide wa 
retirement benefit ara e na ni pe ti nkan ba te se won lenu ise kini awon nkan to ma leto si kama ni ko de bi pe won padanu emi won iye ni ase ma nsoro death benefit and all that gbogbo iyen na do se pataki e to do se pataki ni pe to ri ta ba ran yan ise ani lati fun ni nkan to fi ma sise en na ti dokita ba wa ni le ni le wusun toba toba ni di boya gloves gone a be face mask it out to one lo ba yin si toba sinbe eh o le fa irewe so kon wa fun abi awon kon mi to ni lati lo o le je ogun o te le je to be yi sha be gan sugbon ti gbugbo awon kon to to ma wulo fun lati sise yen la se yori toba si only my dear Kara Kuya, that is she shiny rule. He lives on there. Are you kind, Uncle? Are you kind, beauty, my shepherd, Uncle? Oh, Lucy, she are you kind? He beat you, my Mori, my Mori, my Mori, ya. Tori pay in a company work environment. Do we work environment here? to ba je to ma mu ori wi wa ise le ma o le ma fe lo bo si je ko lo so gbo awon kan bayi o pelu nkan ti awon dokita wa ati nurse na to se ma fe ma lo si eh oke okun so o di do do fun wa pe ge bi ori lede ki ajo pe nu yi pe awon osise eh eto ilera bawo ni asima bi won la ruge ki won le ma se ise ni ona tutọ ati eto ye ko den se ko nse ijoba apapo ni kon iko ala ti fi ye wa toro oro oro eto eh eto ilera ko wa lowo ijoba apapo ni kon ijoba meta la ni ijoba ibile local government ijoba ipinle ti state ati ijoba apapo awon ijoba meta ni de no ma ngba dokita na sise so eto ta ba gbele fun won ni gbugbu awon ijoba yen ohun lo ma je ka mo boya awon dokita yen ma fe duro abi won ni duro si si luwa sugbon ani lati pa enu po nge bi ijoba boya ijoba ibile ni o ijoba ipinle ni o bi ijoba apapo bi pe ka fun won ni eto won ti o ma le je ki won duro si bi nitori pe ta ba se be awon to ma lo won a si ma lo o to to wa nbe niyan sugbon olohun ko fun wa logbon ato yi ta fi ma se e mu ro pe awon ibere ti arabirin abi onuwo po la bi mi ni thank you very much thank you uh, we will now invite the Chairman of the PTF to round it up. Well, I, I think all the questions have been answered. And, and, and I know you want to go and file your reports. Uh, to truly thank you for your patience. We appreciate every effort you are putting in place. Uh, 
uh, and uh, to say that uh, we're in this battle together. There, there's so much to do. Uh, my, my, my appeal uh, to each and every one of you is that uh, it's quite a tasking job. I, and as a, as, as a task force, we truly appreciate the time you take every day working on this. And uh, that doesn't, it doesn't look as if it's going to end soon. Uh, but uh, j j just to appeal that uh, stick in there and do the best that you can do. My appeal to Nigerians is that as we prepare for the uh, Salah celebrations, we should do it with all sense of uh, responsibility. Uh, make sure that we take care of ourselves. Uh, the uh, biggest remedy that is available to us now is to respect and observe the non-pharmaceutical measures that have been put in place. And that's the only thing uh, as we await the outcome of the vaccines. Uh, I've had a lot of the, uh, I mean, the questions today centered around what we needed to do to engraft ourselves in the schemes of uh, making sure that we get the vaccines. I can assure you that we are part of a United Nations uh, b b b uh, a group. Uh, uh, the Solidarity, the uh, group which has been driven by the WHO, and also uh, uh, the United Nations in terms of ensuring that even the weaker nations would have access to the vaccines when they come on scene. Uh, but the big boys are already cornering it in terms of uh, investing heavily uh, in it. Well, I'm glad uh, that the Honorable Minister of Health has put to rest. You know, we have had a serious running battle with the Madagascar COVID-19 uh, remedy. Uh, but uh, 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 at least our own evaluation on this side of the, of, of, of the whole thing has, uh, has taken some time, but we've come to the logical conclusion, like he rightly said. Yes, it's got some uh, substances, but we cannot attest to the fact that it can be curative in any form dealing with the COVID-19. And uh, looking at the experiences that Madagascar is currently going through, it's a clear indication that if it had any curative uh, 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 substances, uh, we wouldn't see what is happening there now. And uh, that tells us one thing. We should not be too quick to jump to conclusions. Because when this thing came on here, I knew we were being beaten and hustled as to why haven't we brought it in. But you can see that we decided to ensure that it went through a policy and a process of validation. Now, our position as a country especially the position of Mr. President, even when he took delivery of it. He told the President of Guinea that brought it, yes, I'm receiving it, but we are going to put it through a policy of validation. Believe you me, if on the spot of it we had said that, yes, we can use it, we would have all rushed there now and purchased uh, the, 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 the drink. And we would have just had a lavish party thinking that it would uh, help us. Uh, but we, we, we commend the efforts of the Madagascan people, truly, like we commend the efforts of our people here. Uh, in my statement this uh, afternoon, I did mention the fact that in our own slow and steady process, the central bank has made available a substantial amount of resources to drive the process of research invention, and I had the privilege on Monday to inaugurate the body of experts that are charged with that responsibility. Because it's a health-related 
matter. We have to take it step by step, and we have to be very cautious of the fact that whatever we finally say to the public that this can be of help, truly it should be of help. Even the hydroxyl chloroquine that we have received from India, you know, in some climes now, that is totally relegated to the background. It's, nobody is talking about it again. There are different com combinations that clinicians have decided to use uh, for the purposes of dealing with the symptoms, not even the cure of COVID-19. For cure, we are way behind the virus in terms of its potency. We are just trying to do catch up. But I believe in the process that we have set as a country and as a government, we are, made, we are making steady progress and we are also cooperating with the international organizations to see that in whatever happens eventually, if it's a cure, if it's a vaccine, Nigeria is not short change. Thank you so much for your patience. I wish you a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman PTF. Um, we must also thank Nigerians and thank the gentlemen of the press for their patience and their perseverance. Today we have been reminded of so many things. Uh, you have been told that research is on the front burner and that the body of experts into health sector, healthcare sector research is, is uh, been inaugurated. We have been told that um, to get your test result, technology will soon be uh, deployed. We have also uh, pleaded with hospitals not to reject um, patients. We have mentioned that um, safety of our children in school is uh, important and it's going to form part of what is um, going to uh, determine the reopening of schools. We have emphasized the wearing of masks in public places and that you should not uh, share your mask with anybody. Also, please discard your mask properly. It can be dangerous to the environment if you just throw it around. And we have told you that Salah is approaching. Please plan your programs. Ensure that you avoid uh, activities that will endanger your, your life. Finally, uh, we thanked all uh, people of influence and other Nigerians that have come out to declare their status. It's a, a confidence building move that shows that this virus is um, potent. It does not discriminate. So please don't think it is um, an elitist um, virus. It can affect anybody. If you are infected, seek help. Don't conceal it. Don't spread it. Let's build a dialogue around COVID-19. I thank you very much. God bless Nigeria. We hope to see you on Monday. Records and I still find out that um, some have not uh, yet uh, shown up for the process. Please come around. Let's take the test. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's not a, a death sentence. Please, let's take the tests. Let's keep ourselves safe.